All right, we begin a new study for I don't know how long, uh, ethics, and I've entitled it The Basis for Successful Human Interaction. I truly believe that we can come to understand the importance of this uh, concept. I think we have lost even the a basic definition of ethics. Uh, I think we have been exposed to a wide variety of different opinions and practices of ethics. And as a Christian, as a believer, uh, we're going to come to learn what should be the source of our ethics and we will begin to see how that affects every area of life, including relationships. So as we begin, what are some of the things I hope that we can accomplish in this study? What am I going to try to attempt to address? And you have detailed notes there, uh, so give me a kudo on that, okay? All right, what are some of the topics? First, what makes ethics important? Just like anything in life, we need to understand the importance of what we are studying or what we are doing. And we want to discover why ethics is so important. What are ethics? If we were at the church and I gave you a three by five card and say, I want you to write down what you think ethics is or what you think the word means, would you be able to give me a one sentence concise definition? Hopefully we are also gonna talk about what is the source for ethics. And in the next couple of weeks, we are gonna be dealing with what is known as situational ethics and how the source of ethics has shifted and how that shift in ethics has somewhat corrupted the tenets of the church. Is the word ethics another word for absolutes? An absolute is something that we believe is true for all situations, for all people in every area of the world. Can ethics be considered a synonym for absolutes? And then is there a history behind the concept of ethics? And there most certainly is, and we're gonna see how that has evolved over the centuries and how we have come to understand the concept today. And should there be ethics in every sphere of life? Now, sphere of life, I'm talking about, should there be ethics in business, in medicine, in education, in religion? Should there be ethics in every sphere of life? And then are there exemptions to applying ethics? Is there ever a situation to where ethics is a gray area and it would be up to the individual whether he or she would apply a standard depending on the circumstances. And then is there a general pattern for ethics? Is there a general framework like a window frame that would hold the glass? And are there specific patterns for specific areas? And then is ethics culturally relevant? Do we need ethics today in our culture? Does it, can it really make a difference in our culture today if there are ethics? And if there's not ethics, what impact is that having in culture, if any? And then what is situational ethics? This is gonna be something that might implode, implode 
your mind, cause your mind to go, wow, whippy, whippy, boom, 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 boom. Because this is a very serious uh, situation that has crept into the church unnoticed as the Bible talks about false teachers. So, nice picture about ethics, uh, people relationships, politics, uh, postmodern theory, science, philosophy, pragmatism. Ethics carries a wide swatch in our world today. I want to give you some word pictures for ethics. I didn't expect you to write down that last slide, okay? That was just a visual. I thought to myself, how can we, is there, are, are there word pictures that would help us understand ethics? And I've come up with about, I think about 20, <coughs> excuse me. And I hope that as we look at them and you look at your notes, uh, you begin to get the sense that it really is important. Ethics are like a canyon that separates two mountains. It is a dividing. It is that which keeps things separate and in their places. Ethics are like the carpenter's level for balance and accuracy. Carpenter uses a level, places it on some type of project he or she is working on to ensure that the wood, the metal, whatever is under construction is balanced. It's not cattywampus. Um, when it is balanced, then you can continue to add to it, continue to build, continue to strengthen it, whatever you need to do, but it needs to be balanced. Ethics are like the hash mark on a sports field providing proper placement. You know the hash marks on a football field every 10 yards and then um, uh, the hash marks in between. Uh, maybe it's every five yards. It's been a long time since I've saw, saw a football game. But they're there to provide proper placement for the the football, the the progression of the game, how much yards have been accomplished, how much further do we have to go? The hash mark is a definitive tool of measurement. Ethics are like x-rays, making in, internal problems a bit more clear. Now, I say that differently than what I wrote it because sometimes x-rays are not very good at looking deeply into the human body and that's why they have MRIs. But the whole idea behind an x-ray x -ray or MRI is to look more intensely into the human body to try to identify what the issue is and avoid guessing. Ethics are like a doctor's stethoscope listening for irregular heartbeats. When I go in and see uh, Dr. Zurad, um, he will take his stethoscope and put it on my chest and listen, and then he'll put it on my back and he'll say, take a deep breath. And he'll do that four times in four different locations on my back. And sometimes on the front, he says, it sounds like you have an irregular heartbeat and I'm subject to AFib. Sometimes I know I have it, sometimes I don't. But evidently that stethoscope is able to help him listen to my heart and determine whether I'm in rhythm how much I'm in rhythm or possibly how much I am out of rhythm. Ethics are like the mechanics diagnostic machine for a car. In the old days, if you took your car in and told the mechanic it's running kind of rough, 
he might go through a dozen different, let's try this, let's try that, come back and see me if it keeps persisting. Well, because cars are so uh, digital now, so much of computers in the cars, they have designed machines, almost like an EKG where it's hooked up to the uh, uh, computer in the car and is able to diagnose what might be wrong. I've, I've taken my uh, car or my truck sometimes out to uh, Aaron because I was having a problem. He's got this machine, he plugs it into the bottom of the dashboard and to the computer area there and clicks the button and, oh yeah, you have this, you have that, simple fix. Ethics are like a plumb line determining vertical accuracy. A plumb line is a string that you tie to something above you with a weight down in the bottom and the way it hangs will determine if it is vertical or if it's swaying to the right or to the left, not swaying, but lining up to the left or the right, then it's not plumb. Ethics are like a caliper used to accurately measure the distance between two sides of something. Ethics are like a compass used by architects for determining the distance between two points on a map. Ethics are like a square when you are framing or when you need to find right angles. And this is helpful if you are uh, constructing uh, a piece of furniture, you want the pieces coming together to be square so that they will fit tightly. Ethics are like an angle gauge, which is capable of measuring angles so that you can determine if everything is at a true level. I think I've seen this, but I've seen these, but I've never um, had the uh, opportunity to use one. But there's a purpose for that. Ethics are like an odontom, odontom, odont, yeah, that the thing that measures how fast you go, uh, od, odometer, which <laughs> which measures how many miles you have traveled. So instead of guessing. From here to do shore at 15 miles, you can actually clock how far it is. And ethics are like a, a glucometer, which measures blood sugar levels. So occasionally when I check my blood sugar, which I should do every day, but I do not, I will prick my finger and I will take that little expensive a dollar a strip, put it inside of the meter touch it to the droplet of blood, and the meter goes five, four, three, two, one, boom! And it will give me a number anywhere from 95. I've been a long time ago. I, I was up to 400 at one time. So it helps me understand the lay off the ice cream, okay? And then ethics are like a veneer calpernin. I don't know whether I said that right or not, Carl. Instrument used to measure internal and external dimensions of an object with greater accuracy. So evidently this instrument was named after some guy that invented it. But again, what is it doing? It's looking for the dimensions, either internally or externally of an ob object, determining greater accuracy, not guessing. Well, I think it's, you know, four inches and five hash marks. And then ethics are like a micrometer screw gauge that measures diameter of thin wire or thickness of thin metal sheets with accuracy. And I guess this would be important if you are trying to put something together and it can't be a one inch thick piece of metal or a screw that will. Uh, uh, do damage to the metal that you're trying to put together, or even like wood uh, to put some stuff together. <coughs> uh, Carl was helping me put some uh, cabinets together for the truck, and we were using half inch, and he was right. I should have gone to one inch, 
And we had to be careful that we didn't split the wood with the screw being too large. These are word pictures for ethics. And I'm sure you could come up with a whole lot more. A measuring cup could be a word picture for ethics. You look at a recipe and it says a quarter cup or a tablespoon. Carolyn had a very favorite recipe that she could prepackage ahead of time and she called it crazy cake. It was a very simple recipe and she could have a cake whipped up in probably 30 minutes and it called for different measurements of a couple of different products and one time when we were in Illinois we were living in a 10 by 50 single wide trailer six of us and a dog that was interesting uh the girl slept out on uh uh pressed wood doors elevated on uh cinder blocks and the boys lived in uh slept on bunk beds almost a little bit bigger than a walk-in closet. So that was an interesting time in our life. But we began to notice as we enjoyed this crazy cake that it just didn't taste right. What in the world was going on? And I can pretty well eat any cake provided that I have cold vitamin D milk because I just soaked that sucker in milk. Hmm, that is good stuff. And so we discovered that she needed glasses and instead of a teaspoon of salt, it was a tablespoon of salt. So her ethics <laughs> were wrong when it came down to making that cake. Now here I wanna show you a visual for ethics, you don't have this, but I think it will help us to understand. This is our world. How many people are in our world? Anybody have an idea? The census of 2020 came up with 7.8 billion people. Do you realize the United States is the third largest company, uh, country behind China and Oh, um, India, for the third largest country. 7.8 billion people in this world. And the umbrella symbolizes ethics. So what am I trying to help you realize here? That no matter what continent you live on, no matter what country you live in, no matter what city, county, state, ethics must be the overarching principle for successful human relationships. It has to be. Otherwise, and we see, I'm sorry, we see this today, we have chaos, don't we? We have selfishness. We have splinter groups coming up. We have these splinter groups saying right is wrong, wrong is right, black is white, white is black. This is very, very important. It affects the entire world, or it should. Next time we get together, we're going to talk about the etymology and the history of ethics. Okay, what's the etymology behind the word ethics? Where did it come from? And what is the history of ethics? All right, questions that you might have or thoughts. I know this was a little bit abbreviated. However, I just, I don't want to fry your brain out the first night. We'll do that the next couple of weeks together. Okay. Jeanette, you look like you got a question. question. I have a question. Sure. Um, 
is is it like morals like right from wrong is that what you're getting at yes ethics should lead to morals ethics right. should lead to right or wrong ethics is black and white in essence if you look at it we will discover in a couple of weeks that those who advocate situational ethics would tell you that the motivation for your decision has got to be love not truth so if you really love somebody then you should act like you love them even though they're standing there with an uzi about to slaughter a bunch of people it's just really really crazy but if you stop and listen to the news stop and read newspapers stop and read some of these groups that are protesting their ethics are situational ethics they don't have a moral compass except their own selfish desires ethics cannot be motivated by my own selfish desires it has to have a content that can be applied to all people in any situation all the time hence you got absolutes then don't you because that's the definition for absolutes thank you i gave you a long answer to a short question sorry <laughs> <laughs> no no it's good <laughs> anybody else any other thoughts just one thing that when when you get to our age and you're trying to read the micrometer or the vernier it is uh it's impossible with my eyes. I, I was trying to measure the thickness of a wire the other day, and I I could measure it, but I couldn't read the markings on, on the tool. <laughs> well, okay. Let, let me ask you a question, Carl. Let's run with that, okay? Yeah. Is, is the micrometer wrong, or is it your eyesight? My eyesight. Ah, so ethics might appear to be wrong to somebody, but it's right. their eyesight about the situation. Right. That's right. a great illustration, Carl. That's a great illustration. Good point. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Absolutely. I think this would be a very fascinating study. I want it, I want it more than fascinating. I want, like anything that we do, for this to begin to seep into your consciousness. So you can interact with it, with the Holy Spirit, that when you are living life, you will know why you do what you do, because you are in the process of developing ethics. Ethics is a evolutionary process, and that's a good word. Ethics is a developing process because we do not know everything at any single moment. We are constantly learning if we are in the Word of God. Is that correct? Is that a true statement? Yes. Then if it is, yes. if it is, then your ethics are going to be developing. Because things that we are facing today, even though there's nothing new under the sun, according to Solomon, things that we are facing today are more prevalent and in your face than they were 25 years ago, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. they are. That's for sure. That's right. So our ethics 25 years ago was what? Ignore it and hope it goes away. Guess what? <laughs> it didn't go away. It grew. And now we're facing the giants in the land. All right. Sunday morning, Mother's Day, yippee, yippee, yippee. I have a special gift for all the moms. Uh, the Mother's Day message has been posted. I saw that. I, uh, I, I recorded it today and put it out there because uh, the weekend's going to be a little bit tricky and busy for me to do that. Uh, Sunday morning, Hebrews chapter 11, we finish up on... Uh, the dangers of disbelief. The dangers of disbelief. 
And then Sunday night, Jephthah, did he sacrifice his daughter? Judges chapter 11, as we finish up with that rascal. Other than that, I will be talking to a very, very dear friend that I worked for in Montana. Did you know that I made mattresses at one time? You might be sleeping on a mattress I made. Check underneath and see if you see my initials. <laughs> Mattress Mill in Bozeman, Montana. And so he's got multiple sclerosis. And so uh, he contacted me. And uh, so I'm going to call him 1 o'clock our time Sunday and just kind of get caught up with him. He's a great, precious, gentle, godly man. Absolutely. Love the brother to death. All right, if there's nothing else, I'm going to go and I am going to commit willful sin. I'm going to go have a bowl of ice cream. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I beat you. I already had mine. <laughs> <laughs>